Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel H&E Life and I am Dr. Cindy Wong and today I want to start talking about common pathologies found in the stomach. So let's start with this biopsy. All right, where are we in the body? Let's take a quick look and we can see abundance of this pink apical mucin and pink small apical mucin. And so we know we are in fulveolar epithelium, therefore we're in the stomach. All right, so you have this piece of tissue and the endoscopist said, I went into this person's, uh, I did the, this person's upper GI endoscopy and in the stomach I found this polyp and I took it out. And now this is the polyp that we see. And let's look at it. We are in fulveolar epithelium. We have these very pink parietal cells. So we know we are in some sort of oxyntic mucosa. And now the compared to normal oxyntic mucosa, we have these dilated glands. Let's look at this dilated glands. They're composed of the glands that contain the parietal cells. And you can see that the parietal cells seems to be a kind of uh, undulating and that in the lumen, they are kind of starting to form these little tufts. They're kind of getting in, enlarged, I guess you could say, with these uh, apical tufting. And this tufting and this dilation is the prime and perfect example of a fundic gland polyp. And the fundic gland polyps basically must have dilated glands. And these glands must be lined by parietal cells. And for example, if all we saw was this, this gland and all we saw was this epithelium, you can't call this a fundic gland polyp based on this because this is just more fulveolar epithelium. So this is a finding most commonly people who have been taking proton pump inhibitors for a prolonged period of time. This is completely benign. All right, personally, I think it's very cute. Next thing. So now let's look at where we are again. Um, when we zoom in on this piece of tissue, once again, we see the very apical pink small mucin droplets. So we are in fulveolar epithelium, so we're in the stomach. Now, let me turn this easier so people can actually see. Okay, so here we have the surface and then let's look at the glands underneath. Uh, we do not see any very brightly eosinophilic parietal cells. So therefore we see these kind of clear-ish mucin. So this is antral mucosa. This doesn't look quite normal to our normal antral mucosa, right? It looks kind of dark, doesn't it? And this is an overall picture of chemical slash reactive gastropathy. When we say gastropathy, it means there is no inflammation. Gastritis is when there is inflammation. Anything in pathology that ends with itis is an inflammatory response. So this is called chemical slash reactive gastropathy, which means this is a response in the stomach that is not caused by any sort of inflammation. But if you t look at the name chemical, it's indicating that this is, for example, is caused by insects, which are a drug that people take, which in, in a sense is a chemical. It could also be caused by uh, bioreflux or increased acid secretion or a, a variety of things uh, that happen in our body, but it causes damage to the stomach. Key features for reactive gastropathy uh, we can see here, actually, let's see, this fragment is even better. One of the key features of chemical gastropathy is mucin depletion. When we look at this tissue overall, it kind of looks very dark and you could start thinking maybe are these nuclei getting darker and large and hyperchromatic, but in actuality, they're normal sized nuclei. The only reason it looks so dark overall is because the mucin is getting depleted. There's less of it. You can see that the, each of these droplets are much smaller and in areas, it looks like there's like almost none in these droplets. So this is called mucin depletion. Another key feature of reactive gastropathy is you have corkscrewing of your glands. Usually it just goes down and comes up. It could be a little curved, but in contrast to this, this is like corkscrewing or another thing you can think of. It's like a windy road on a mountainside where you're constantly making uh, these ridiculous turns. Another feature is uh, stromal edema or lamina propria edema. So let's look, for example, in this piece, the lamina propria here is still sort of lightly pink. You still have your stromal cells and some uh, occasional chronic inflammation. But then when we come back to this piece, 
the lamina propria is definitely not as pink, even compared to just this area. This It's kind of more bluish haze, and the stroma cells are more spaced around. So this is a sign of edema when everything sort of is a little expansile and you have empty space in between your cells. Another thing you'll see is fulvular hyperplasia. That is when your, your epithelium, your fulvular epithelium starts to get a little hyperplastic and it starts to produce more of itself. And then that's when you have this villa form like formation of your surface epithelium. It's almost like, oh, you could start seeing villi on the surface, whereas normally it should be more of a, you could draw a straight line over the surface. But when you have fulvular hyperplasia, you could almost be like flat, flat, flat. And all of a sudden, oh, here's another little villi and the villi. But these are not true villi. It's just hyper growth of your fulvular epithelium that is now protruding outwards to resemble a villus. So those are all features of chemical slash reactive gastropathy. All right, so now we have another stomach body biopsy, and you can tell it's stomach body is because on the surface you have fulvular epithelium, and deep down you have the mucosa is filled with these glands with prior cells. So we are in oxyntic mucosa, which is commonly found in the stomach uh, fundus and body, and now we look at this. Does this sort of remind you of what we saw just a little bit earlier? It kind of have some sort of reactive look to it. You can see that the glands here are, are darker colored and it looks like there's some mucin depletion, but completely unlike the previous case with chemical gastropathy, you can see this abundance of inflammatory response here at the surface. So there's just no longer chemical gastropathy. And let's look at this inflammation at the surface. So not only do we have chronic inflammation, which is abundance of these plasma cells, and here are some lymphocytes as well. We also have these neutrophils. This, 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 this. We see abundance of neutrophils in the lamina propria and involving the epithelium of the stomach. So this altogether is not a happy looking stomach, right? I said that in the stomach, in the lamina propria of the stomach, you may have some chronic inflammation. This is way too much. So all of together, this is chronic active gastritis. Now, what is causing this chronic active gastritis? It is H. pylori. H. pylori is one of the most common reasons for people to get upper endoscopies for epigastric pain. And H. pylori, which is a bacterial organism that is kind of comma-shaped. I really wish I had a better resolution, but if you could stretch your imagination and trust when I say, do you see all of this grunge at the surface and all this grunge here. H. pylori is a small bacteria that is a wavy comma shape. If we had this, if you had the glass slide for it and you turn your objective to 40x, you can easily see these organisms, especially in this case, this is abundance of excessive amounts of H. pylori. And um, if your institution has it, oh, see, this is kind of great. Here it's like a complete curvy shaped H. pylori. Um, if your institution have it, you can, if you have trouble seeing H. pylori, you could do the H. pylori IHC. But most of the cases, especially when you have this much inflammation and this much active inflammation, you could definitely see the H. pylori organisms. And one key thing about H. pylori organisms, they're generally found at the surface. They are very loosely associated with the surface epithelium. They're not invasive whatsoever. They kind of just gently rests and float right above your epithelium without going into your fulvular epithelium at all. And when you think about it, that's kind of insane, right? These things are kind of just floating on top of your epithelium and it is inducing all of this crazy response from your stomach. So when you have it like this, when you have these active inflammation, this causes a, a lot of epigastric pain. The idea is these people get, once they get treated, the H. pylori will go away and uh, you'll, the stomach will slowly heal. So a person's stomach might look like this, but after they've been received successful treatment, their stomach might slowly regress to normal. So this overall is... H. pylori gastritis, or you could say is chronic active gastritis with H. pylori organisms seen on H&E stain. Okay.
Well, I think that is it for today. I've covered three very benign things in the stomach. Next time I'll talk about half to adenocarcinoma of the stomach. And so I hope everyone found this helpful. Uh, so please like and subscribe and, and hit the notification button so you'll get notified every time I post a new video. And I hope to see everyone next time. Bye.